Welcome back. You're watching the Money Show with me, Kavita Thapia. So, when it comes to investment in fixed income spaces, public provident funds or PPF continue to be preferred investment option for most Indians. So, why is PPF such an attractive option for investors? What are the tax benefits uh, associated with PPF? Can NRIs invest in PPF? Let's understand all of this with Harsh Vaitan Rumta, CFP Rumta Securities. Harsh, good evening and welcome to the show. Uh, so, not only there's this tax benefit, but also the benefit of EEE exit. Exempt, 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 which is which is really huge for a lot of people, especially those who are scared of volatility and want safety and security when it comes to their their money and the money they earn on their money. But uh, uh, people are aware about the basic uh, uh, instrument features of PPF, which is there is a lock in for what 15 years. Uh, the minimum investment amount is almost 500 that can go up to 1.5 lakh, and based on which you can get tax benefit if you are investing as per ATC. And after 15 years, uh, the money that you earn out of it is exempt, exempt, exempt. It's totally tax-free. And the current rate of interest we know is 7.1%, which is reviewed every quarter. But uh, let's uh, let, let's talk about uh, uh, what else does PPF offer you. Uh, my first question to you is the loan that you can take on your PPF uh, corpus or the amount that's invested right now, even if the 10 or 15 years is not completed. Yes, uh, so you're, you're right, Kavita, that PPF is indeed the, one of the most popular debt products that, uh, uh, you know, investors can have. Uh, so just to give you a pre, uh, before coming to your answer as to, uh, to your question as to how much loan can you take, etc. So, uh, PPF was introduced in 1968 and since then, ever since then, it has been one of the most popular debt investment that individuals could make. And primarily so, I mean, because, you know, uh, besides the uh, points that you mentioned, which was that, you know, the interest is tax-free, uh, you know, uh, it's a safety that the government of India is kind of offering you on this. One most important factor is that, uh, you know, it cannot be attached by any court order. So if there is any debt or liability on the account holder, I mean, even if there is a court order on attachment of properties, PPF is being uh, left out of this purview. So that makes it a little more secure in terms of, you know, the personal assets that a person can own. Now coming to uh, liquidity, yes, uh, it's a 15-year uh, uh, deposit which can be renewed in blocks of five years once it is matured. Now, however, in case people need money, in case there is a need for money, there is an option to take a loan from the third year to the sixth year. So if you are in the third year and between the sixth year, then there is a loan facility available which you can take against your deposit. Now, that loan will be up to a subject to a maximum of 25% of the balance that you have two years ago. It's a little complicated stuff, but let's not uh, you know, uh, you know know get uh, confused with those details. In principle, to say that there is a facility to take a loan, uh, which is between the third year and the sixth year, the amount that you are eligible to take loan upon is a value which is 25% maximum, subject to uh, uh, whatever the balance was two years prior. Uh, post six years, you can also uh, take partial withdrawals. You can make a partial withdrawal into this. There is some kind of liquidity that is available in the form of loan and even in case of partial uh, withdrawal. However, there is a limit on which you can withdraw, which is, uh, you know, pretty less in that context to the balance that you will have in your PPF account. With the rate of interest? Okay, so if you're taking loan, the rate of interest is 1%. Okay, so the interest is 1%. However, the period until you've taken a loan, there is no interest that you're going to be paid. So, ineffectively, whatever is the interest rate uh, on PPF, plus 1% is essentially what your cost is going to be for taking the loan. Now, what will what is the uh, duration for the repayment? Do we or or that amount will be uh, deducted from your investments per year or however you are making in PPF? No, so there is a payment that you have to repay it within three years. If I'm not mistaken, you have to repay the months, loan yeah, yeah. within thirty six months. You have to repay the loan, and the interest also needs to be paid. So the one percent additional that has to be paid. So very important to note that while your loan is outstanding, you will not be paid any interest on your deposit. So that's your kind of cost that you're paying. It's interest rate that you have on your uh, uh, PPF account that you're earning plus 1%. The partial withdrawals that you mentioned, Harsh, are they subjected to uh, certain conditions? Yes, uh, like there is a withdrawal, like there's an eligibility for loan amount, mm -hmm. there is a, a limit on the withdrawal that you can make in the form of partial withdrawal. And that can be on specific conditions or you can just, uh, I mean, do you have to really mention the reason why you're doing this partial withdrawal? There has to be some kind of emergency attached to it? 
No, not really. So if you have a, a balance in the account, you are eligible to withdraw without giving any specific reason. And uh, it's unlike an NPS that you can withdraw only under certain circumstances where there is no such restriction. Yeah, and you can just withdraw. But the eligibility of the amount is going to be very restricted in terms of the uh, quantum out of it. So even if you have 10 lakhs in your PPF account, does not mean that you can withdraw 10 lakhs or partial withdrawal. There is a, a formula which makes it uh, which makes the eligibility pretty restricted. However, there is a partial withdrawal option available. Also, Hush, after 15 years, if I still continue to put money in a in a PPF, will I still get the tax benefit? And what will be that tax-free period window available uh, for investing then? For how many years? Okay, so once your, uh, your PPF matures, you have an option to renew it for a block of 5 years. So, uh, so every 5 years, then you can continuously keep going on. So once 15 years are done, you renew the PPF account for 5 years. You don't have to redeem, uh, remove the balance that you've already accumulated. So that you can leave it as it is. When you renew it, the entire balance continues to get uh, in, uh, the earned interest on it as per the interest rate as may be applicable on that day, in that quarter rather. And uh, you can contribute the same the rules apply that 500 rupees is minimum up to 1 lakh, 1.5 lakh. Listen, invest in PPF, Harsh? I'm sorry, I missed your question. Can, can, you can question? senior citizens invest in PPF? Is there any age yes, limit uh, for age bar? No, no, there is no such age limit. In mm -hmm. fact, uh, uh, there is one important category of investors who have this question like, can NRIs uh, invest into PPF? So, well, uh, because many people, while they opened the account, they were resident Indians and then they moved overseas to become NRIs. So, there is a specific provision which says that when you opened your PPF account, at that point in time, if you were a resident Indian, and then when you be became an NRI, so in that case, you can continue investing into your PPF account until the 15 years get over. So on maturity, thereafter you cannot renew your PPF account because you're an NRI in the form of uh, your residential status with NRI. However, as I said again, once you move out, your your residential status changes. But when you open the account, you are a resident Indian. So you can continue depositing in that account as well. If you want to open a new PPF account in, uh, being an NRI, you cannot how many PPF account can a person actually open and uh, 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 do we get tax benefit for each of those accounts? So, so technically you cannot open more than one PPF. So you cannot have more than right. one PPF I mean, Some account. people do it in the name of a minor or uh, you know people do it in the name of their wives or their spouses. Can that be done? So each individual uh, um, uh, who is a major, so husband, wife, each individual will open their own PPF account. If there is a minor, then the minor has to open a PPF account under guardianship of the parent. So, say for example, the father and the child has a PPF account separately. The child has an independent PPF account. The father has an independent uh, PPF account. Now, both accounts put together, there is a limit of 1.5. So, you cannot put 1.5 lakhs in the name of your minor child and 1.5 lakhs in your name. So, both put together is 1.5 lakhs. Uh, and many people I know have been investing in the child's name of 1.5 lakh, even in their own name 1.5 lakh. That's not allowed technically. And the mother, father, all adults, all majors can have independent uh, PPF accounts. And if you're investing, uh, say say the uh, the uh, the wife is a homemaker, you can still invest into the PPF account of uh, the wife. It need not be necessary out of income generated by her, or her on her own income. You can invest into her PPF account. You can invest into the husband's PPF account and the minor, but whoever is the guardian in the minor's account, that guardian plus minor should have a maximum investment of 1.5 lakhs in a year. All right. So these are all aspects which are uh, uh, mostly uh, never discussed about PPF and very crucial for an investor to know about. Uh, we move on and we have our first viewer on phone line with us and that is uh, Mr. N. V. Chandrasekhar from Hyderabad. Good evening, sir. How are you doing? Uh, okay, so you have uh, quant mutual funds in your portfolio? Uh, yeah, that's right. Sir. I invested in uh, uh, fund, multi asset and value fund. Sorry, that's I did not get the name. I did not get the and name the, of the quant fund, sir. Can you repeat it, please? Uh, uh, Can you repeat? Yeah, I have uh, invested in uh, this fund, uh, mutual fund. What are the schemes uh, name, sir? Uh, the multi asset and absolute fund. Right. Do you have the fund's name on you? 
This is the fund house yeah, name. Multi asset is a quant multi asset. Quant multi asset. Quant multi asset and quant absolute fund. Quant absolute fund. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Now, actually, I have invested with. I am not telling you the other bigger portfolio, but I want to know why this small mutual fund is going down. How this? These two funds are doing very badly, and is it? Okay, to continue in these two months. So this is just six months back you invested, right? Yeah, yeah. Still, still some uh, eight months I have been investing in this, but uh, they are doing very badly. Six to eight months. Is that what you are saying? Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay. Got it. But in the, in the, uh, all the other funds in the same category are doing uh, better than this. Fund, fund. But why do you have the same category of funds in your portfolio? Then, if you already have this category fund, and uh, 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 just for diversification, uh, so for uh, diversification, I, I you should be going, that. going, go, go, going beyond these categories. No, I would request you to send the other portfolio, other funds also later on. But right now, just let's just talk about quant multi asset and quant absolute fund. Hush. Yeah. yeah. Hush. Yeah, uh, so Kavita, one uh, I don't have the query with me, but you are of course uh, trying to get the names of the things if I have understood correctly. It is quant multi asset and a quant absolute uh, fund, right? Is right, and he invested right, and he invested almost six months back. That's what he's saying, and he's unhappy with the fund's performance as compared to the peers right now. Okay, so two things on this. Uh, one is the quant has a very momentum kind of a investment strategy. Okay, so they don't really follow. the traditional long invest uh, long term investment theories like a growth or a value they more like a momentum and you know timing the market kind of an investment philosophy that they have at the fund house now with regards to the two schemes both schemes by themselves are good i don't see a reason why he should be worried about the performance in 6 months uh, you know within within their category that they are doing the multi asset and the absolute uh, both are good in their category in terms of their performance otherwise So I think it's a little too early for him to think uh, as to why the schemes are not doing well. It's just been six months, so give it time in that context. Now coming back to the original and the first point that I made, their investment philosophy you need to understand. They are not, uh, you know, typically the uh, you know the traditional investment fund managers. So if you're not comfortable with their investment strategy, then you will need to change. If you're comfortable with the strategy and not happy with the performance right now, then you can ignore and continue with the fund. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Chandra Shekhar, for sending us your query. We move on. And do I have my other viewer on the call with me, Aditya Khurana from New Delhi? Yeah. Hi, Aditya. Good evening. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing good. Thank you so much. So you have uh, Nippon Growth Fund. You have HDFC Balance Advantage, Axis Blue Chip, Axis Small Cap, Axis Nifty Fifty, ICICI ICI Infrastructure, ABSL, PSU Equity Fund, and Kotak Tax Saver. Right? Yeah, and uh, your investment time horizon is? Um, I don't have a time horizon, so like uh, it's a long term thing. Okay, you just got this portfolio done for yourself? Yeah, actually I had a help with, uh, from my father, but uh, I just wanted to know if it was strong enough to you know create wealth in the long term. Okay, since it's not tied to any uh, goal, Harsh, uh, how would you like to analyze these funds? Okay, uh, so currently, uh, Kavita, I'm just trying to you know get up to speed to note down the schemes that he has with him. Uh, so it's Nippon Growth, HDFC Balance Advantage, Axis Blue Chip, Kota Tax, ABSL, PSU. That's the names I could gather. Uh, so you know, one very clearly, not having a time horizon will only try and give you. I mean, we we don't really know where are we heading towards. Now, if you require this money in the short term, then of course the the portfolio is going to be very different. Now, assuming a fact that uh, the investments are going to be over long term, okay, that's the first part. Only then can you take a view on equity because he has an access uh, blue chip, he has uh, ABSL, PSU, Kota Tax Saver. So these are pure equity, Nippon Growth. So these are all pure equity funds. So the minimum time horizon that he will need to keep with himself is between eight to ten years at least. Now, if that is the case, then of course the investments can be made into equity. Now, asset allocation point of view, I can say that you have 80% kind of an investment into pure equity fund, and 20% could go into debt. A debt would include uh, some portion of uh, debt allocation in the HDFC Balanced Advantage Fund as well. 
uh, so your access nifty 50 ipsa infra fund access small cap these are very very aggressive equity funds so aditya you need to be very clear as to what is the minimum time horizon you may not have exactly how long do you can you keep uh, be invested but at least have a view as to what is the minimum uh, time horizon that you can stay invested if it's 8 years from now or 10 years from now then equity allocation is fine i think you should re send the query again to us post having some clarity on how much is the minimum time horizon that you can stay invested second element you really have a lot of schemes in your portfolio you really don't need so many schemes in the name of diversification you have a, a, a sector fund you have a psu fund you have a small cap large cap and in the large cap you have an axis blue chip and nifty 50 again you need to consolidate you don't need both of these schemes in the large cap you just have a nifty 50 and that is good enough uh, to have representation of the large cap so i think you need to do a total rework and uh, probably come back again with your query with little more specifics as to what you're looking at how you want the asset allocation because if you give me that information then probably we can design something there on the phone line with me do you want to ask harsh anything okay so uh, like yeah. if uh, yeah so if uh, my minimum time horizon is uh, like so uh, if i say 10 to 15 years so uh, how can that be like okay yeah yeah so no, that that is a good that is a good point that you made aditya so if you're saying 10 to 15 years then i would say about 80% of whatever you're investing every month so you have 5800 i can see 5300 3200 i really don't know how you got these amounts also it usually we see uh, investments which are in round figures i mean it could be the 6000 or 5000 or 3000 uh, but nevertheless uh, whatever be the reason it's no not that you cannot do it uh, your total monthly investment Take about 80% of them and pack it into pure equity funds. Now, within the pure equity funds, if I can give you some recommendations right now, uh, Nifty 50, access Nifty 50 that you have with you, uh, invest about 30% uh, into that of the total investment that I'm talking about. Um, you can have, uh, you can continue with Nippon Growth, access uh, ABSL PSU, and uh, Kota Tax Saver because these are what you already uh, are. You need a tax, uh, tax benefit under Section 80. So you can continue with Kota Tax Saver. In and uh, on a 20 percent, you can just invest into the HDFC Balance Advantage Fund. I think this will consolidate your portfolio into about a uh, five scheme, and that should be good to do. All right, that's all, Aditya. All the best with your investment portfolio. Harsh, we move on to our next question, which is uh, from Shrinivas uh, Kadiyala and. Uh, uh, Harsh, the question is uh, on HDFC multi cap fund, and he wants to know that uh, can he start his SIP in this fund, and is multi cap a good category for him? Yeah, uh, so coming to the multi cap category first, Kavita. So, what does a multi cap category do? So, as per the mandate, they are supposed to invest 25% of their corpus in all three segments, market segments. So, you will have a 25% allocation to large cap. You will have a 25% to mid cap and 25% to small cap. So that is a mandatory allocation that has to be done. The balance 25% can be invested into any any of the three categories. However, the fund manager feels uh, you know comfortable investing with them wherever, wherever they find opportunity. So with regards to multi cap category, it's a good category to be into. You get representation across the market segment. Now with regards to HDFC multi cap, so HDFC as a fund house is one of the top performing fund houses overall. So I'm not talking about only one scheme. I'm talking about the assets that they manage, equity assets as a whole. The performance is definitely above, my, you know, the category, above the uh, mutual fund industry average. So it speaks a lot about the fund manager. So most certainly you can trust upon this scheme in terms of the uh, multi-cap as a structure and the fund house, which is HDFC. And you can most certainly start investing into that. I think that will be all for today. Thank you so much, Harsh, for being on the show and helping our viewers with their financial portfolio queries. And uh, on that note, it's time to sign off. But I'm going to leave you with our WhatsApp number and email ID where you can reach us and send us your portfolio-related queries. Uh, email ID is the money show at etnow.tv and the WhatsApp number is 865-797-4571. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.